Howdy and welcome to the Confidence Through Health podcast. I'm Jerry Snyder. As an elite level athlete, owner of All In Health and Wellness, and author of the book Confidence Through Health, my goal is to help you achieve your goals and dreams using health as the conduit to get there. So I want to take a minute to thank our sponsor for this episode, Luna Juice Bar. If you are in the Waco area, stop by Luna Juice Bar or check out their food truck at the Magnolia Silos for your healthy food, your juice, your smoothies, everything that you need to get your body heading in the right direction from a nutrition standpoint. Check out Luna Juice Bar. The link is on my website, confidencethroughhealth.com. Or you can go to lunajuicebar.com to look at the menu and order online as well. So thank you to our sponsor, Luna Juice Bar. Howdy and welcome back to the Confidence Through Health Podcast. This is Jerry Snyder, your host. Today's episode, I wanted to talk about the most important thing for your health. And you might say, "Uh uh-oh, he's going to tell me I have to exercise. Nope. Not the most important thing for your health. Okay, so it's nutrition, right? Because as a lot of people have said, we're getting into that thought process where it's your health is 80% nutrition, 20% exercise, right? So it's 80-20. So we're going to talk about nutrition today. Nope, I'm not going to talk about nutrition. Okay, so is it is it sleep? Is it stress relief? What is it? Well, so let's talk about, can you survive without exercise? Sure you can. 70 plus percent of Americans are proving that, that you can survive or you can at least live without exercise. Survive, I guess, depends on how you define that term. Are you surviving long-term? Are you just surviving for today? But you can live without exercise. So, okay, is it food? How long can you live without food? Well, that's something that can be debated slightly. There's new research coming out on this. Uh, I say new, but it's, it's not necessarily new. There's doctors that have been doing this for a long time as far as fasting. You've probably heard of intermittent fasting, long-term fasting, uh, is something that I'm actually doing with some of my clients. I've prepared them for it and getting into long-term fasting. You, you, you may have heard that on a previous episode I talked about a little bit. Um, and if you are overweight to a certain point, you don't have to eat and you're going to be okay if you do it right. And what I mean by do it right is Yeah, you have to do the right kind of vitamins. You have to prep your body right before you stop eating. So it takes a couple of months to get ready for that point. So, and then you have to come off of it correctly. So there's there's more to it than just, hey, I'm just going to not eat today. But you don't, you don't have to have food necessarily. And you can live a long time. I mean, the record is somewhere out there in like the, 200 plus days, 250 days, somewhere in there. Um, Or I should say the the record, but the longest documented. Without eating. So this old story that maybe you've heard before of like you you can only last 14 days or 21 days without food is is wrong. So then it's, uh, okay, it's water. Water is the most important thing, right? Our body is more water than anything else as far as mass is is concerned. We're a very fluid body. We have a lot of water. So it's water. That's the most important thing, right? Nope. Because you can actually last a couple days, three, four. Depending on how you prepare yourself before you stop drinking, you might even last up to a week without water depending on where you are, what you do, how you go through it. So, okay. So if it's, if it's, if exercise is the most important, if nutrition's not, if 
stress and sleep, water, food, all those things are not, what's the most important thing? The most important thing is the thing that you cannot live without for probably, I mean, depending on how well you train, you can train yourself to live without it, but you, you're most, the vast majority, I should say, like 99.99% of people, if they tried to do this today, would die within a few minutes. And that's oxygen. Why do you think one of the first things you do with CPR, you check for a pulse and you check for breathing, right? You, you try and make sure they're awake. You tell somebody to go get help. You check for a pulse. You check for breathing. Breathing. You don't have any control without, you know, taking medication, um, without, obviously you can exercise and increase your heart rate, but like you can't sit here as I'm sitting here. I can't tell myself, I can't tell my heart to beat faster. I can try, but it's not going to work very well. And I'm highly trained athlete and I can sit here and say, beat faster. And it's not going to work. Most of us go through the day without ever thinking about breathing. But if you stopped and thought about it, you could tell yourself to breathe faster. Right? That's what most people do. If you're watching this on YouTube, your shoulders are going up. You're breathing through your mouth. You can breathe real fast. And then you stop. And as I'm talking, I'm not thinking about breathing. Even as I'm talking about breathing, I'm not thinking about how I'm physically breathing. Your body just does it. Breathing is the most important piece of being alive. And it can be one of, if not the most important piece of being healthy. If you breathe correctly. And I had a choir teacher choir director in high school, Mr. Galliano. We called him Mr. G. So Mr. G used to say, and it was funny, we always, we, we, we sort of, of course, we're, you know, we're teens. We'd make fun of things that we didn't understand or that sounded odd or um, that we couldn't prove. Or, so he would say, in teaching us to breathe properly, in teaching us to be able to breathe, to sing properly, he would say, the only way or the, the most efficient and best way to breathe happens when you sleep. And of course we'd always joke with him whenever he would say that, like, how do you know you're asleep? How do you know that you're breathing efficiently when you're asleep? You don't, do you wake up real quick and see yourself breathing? Of course you're watching other people, you know, they're testing other people and they're, they're observing people sleep to be able to, to determine that. So it's not, you know, you actually watching yourself as we used to joke about as teens, but breathing in your sleep is when you breathe most efficiently, when you breathe the best, when you're and not just at rest, because you can force yourself and you can think you're breathing correctly, but you cannot be breathing correctly when you're just resting, watching television, watching a movie, and you're just, or reading a book, you know, sitting out by the pool, sitting at the beach, you're resting, but you're probably not breathing in a way that is super efficient because most of us have learned not to. Most of us have been brought up in our in a body that will not allow us to. Which I know is a bit of a hard thing to understand, grasp onto. Um, but it's the truth in that what we've what we've done to ourselves in a Western world, what we've done to our bodies, how we live our lives, 
has prevented us from breathing properly during the day. So how do we breathe differently when we sleep? Besides the fact that when we sleep, most of us, for the most part, are lying down. Some people sleep sitting up. You know, you may fall asleep in the recliner or that kind of thing. But for the most part, most of us sleep laying down. We're in the horizontal position. So how is that different? What is it about that that's different? Well, to breathe properly, and, and there have been different ways throughout the years that people have said, oh, this is the right way, this is the right way, this is the right way. But truly the best way most efficient way to breathe is through your nose. Inhale through your nose, exhale through your nose. You're not, it's not necessarily a, a rhythm that you need to get into. There, there is some science behind rhythms and there's some science behind holding your breath at different points when you breathe. That's what you can do when you're awake and you can force yourself to get into deep breathing and force yourself to get into a healthier breathing style. But when you're asleep, you're not conscious to that. Because if you were, you'd be awake. So your body is breathing based on its needs and based on its ability to breathe easily. So if you don't under, if you don't know, here's what happens when you breathe. Your diaphragm does all the work. So your diaphragm is a muscle that is a thin layer of muscle underneath your lungs. It goes all around your, your cavity. Um, it's If you're standing, it's a horizontal muscle that separates your chest cavity and your abdomen. So it's underneath your ribs, basically separating from your ribs to your belly. Okay. So most people don't use their diaphragm. Most people use their shoulders. If you use your shoulders all day, that's why your neck hurts because your neck muscles are not meant to, your shoulder muscles are not meant to lift your rib cage all day long. They're meant to hold your head up straight. They're not meant to lift these all day long. What's meant to happen is your diaphragm expands out as you breathe in, as you inhale. You force your diaphragm down. And when you exhale, your diaphragm comes up and pushes all the air out. So it goes down. It creates a vacuum and a suction, and it sucks air in. This is what's happening when you sleep. You're not physically in control of your breathing. Your diaphragm is doing all the work. As you're sleeping and your diaphragm's horizontal right here, this is your chest cavity. If you're on YouTube watching this, this is your chest cavity, this is your diaphragm. It is moving and creating a space that is vacuuming, basically. You're, you're creating a vacuum that vacuums air in and forces air out. And if you do this, when you sleep with your nose, inhale and exhale through your nose, your nose has your sinus cavities. There's, if you've ever seen a cross section, there's all kinds of twists and turns and there's all kind of apparatus and, and items in there to catch viruses, to catch bacteria, to catch dirt, to catch bugs, to catch anything that could be around when you're breathing dust in the air all that stuff is filtered through your sinus cavities so it doesn't get into your lungs if you breathe through your mouth guess what that stuff goes into your mouth and goes in because there's nothing that's filtering it so when you sleep at night it's really important to sleep with your mouth shut and breathe through your nose in and out so if that's the most efficient way to do it when you sleep, why don't we do it when we're awake? If you watch, sit and watch, most people 
are are pretty okay being people watchers. Go sit at the, you know, and, and I, I get it. I'm recording this right now. We're still in the pandemic. So there's not huge gatherings of people, but you can still go somewhere and see people and watch people outdoors where they're not wearing a mask. So you can watch their, their mouths, watch them. And you might be astonished if you look for it, how many people are obviously breathing out of their mouth. You can tell how many people and you, whether, whether they're wearing a mask or not, how many people are breathing with their shoulders? You might be astonished to notice that it's almost everybody. So what you need to do is start practicing breathing in and out through your nose. Breathing in and out by having your belly expand, which means your diaphragm is pushing down and out. And so your belly is expanding as you breathe in and it's going back to normal as you breathe out. Your rib cage is staying solid in one place and not moving a, a whole lot. It may expand outwards as the air comes in, but it's not going up towards the sky. So why have we moved into this poor way of breathing. A big reason is because we've become a sedentary being and we sit for so long. I'm sitting right now. And so it's hard when you sit and you, especially if you've gained weight, now you've got weight around your belly that the diaphragm has to push around. And that's whether you're awake or asleep. If you've got extra belly fat, your diaphragm has to work harder to push and, and create that vacuum. But if you're sitting, and a lot of us sit with bad posture, I'm horrible. At least I have been in the past. I work on it now every day. I have been horrible with my posture in the past. Lean over, squinch over, especially if you're on a computer, your hands are on the keyboard, you're scrunched over, you're leaning over your desk, maybe your hands on your your, your head's on your hand, your elbow's on a desk, and, and you're leaning over in that position where you're crunching down on your rib cage, you're crunching down on your lungs, you're crunching down. You're, there's no room for your diaphragm to move. If your diaphragm can't move, you're still going to breathe because if you don't, what happens? You die within minutes. So you're still going to breathe, but you're not getting air all the way down to the other parts of your lungs. You're not getting air to every area of your lung or lungs. You're just going to keep it very shallow and it's just going to go to the very top. What happens when you start running, you go do a, a you know, pick up basketball game, your weekend warrior, any of those types of things. And all of a sudden you have a stitch in your side and you're like, oh my gosh, a stitch in my side. Oh, well, that's one common thing for that is that you've not used those lungs, those part, that part of your lungs, those lobes in a long time. And now you're forcing them to be used because you're forcing as much air as you can possibly get because you're breathing hard into that area. And it's causing pain. So what do you do? So here's what you do. If you're sitting down, you can do this sitting down or standing up, either one. But if you're sitting down and you sit most of the day, take a minute, two minutes, three minutes, every hour. Sit on the very edge of your chair. You know, as far forward as you can get without being unbalanced. You know, I don't want you to fall off the chair, but sit as close to the edge as you can to where you are forced. Your both feet are on the ground. Your knees are at 90 degrees. Your hips are at 90 degrees. You are sitting as straight up as you can. Arch your shoulders back. Yeah, we're in the military, right? So push those shoulders back. Get that chest up. Now, I just breathe through my mouth. See, it's habit. We all do it. What you want to do here is close your mouth and for a minute, you're going to breathe in 
through your nose, slowly forcing your diaphragm down. Don't move your chest, don't move your ribs. Up, at least. Force that diaphragm down. Be conscious of your belly expanding. Then hold it. Hold it for, and you, and you can do this four counts in, four counts hold it, four counts exhale, four counts hold it. You can increase those. You can do them in, you can do four, six, four, six. You can do different varieties of it. But it's important to have those holds in there because that's allowing the oxygen to get into all the areas of the lung before you're forcing it back out, especially those deep areas that you don't use very often. Okay. So in through the nose, hold it out through the nose, hold it. It's really simple. You have to force it. That's exactly what your body's doing at night when you sleep. If you watch somebody sleep, it's exactly what happens. They'll lay there. And they're in and out through their nose. And they hold it for a period of time. And then they exhale. And then they wait. And then they breathe again. What you don't see in healthy individuals is when they sleep. That's a bad sign. Now, snoring, whole nother subject, subject that has to deal with other areas that could be going on in your mouth, in your throat, in your sinus cavities. And that comes from basically the way your mouth is formed, uh, the way your jaw is formed, the way your throat is. If you're overweight, that can play a part in there as well. If you're snoring, there's apparatuses you can use that can fix and control and maneuver, manipulate your jaw so that you can no longer snore. Okay. I recommend those things because if you're snoring, you're not getting proper air. When you do that, you're not getting oxygen in there. Why is oxygen so important? Oxygen is one of the key pieces to blood flow to properly cleaning out your body. And when you don't have it, and when you don't get the carbon dioxide exchange in there, it's going to damage those cells and it's going to damage the blood vessels and it's going to damage other parts of the body. You have to have that exchange and you have to have it working well. So you want oxygen, if you didn't know that. It's the key. And when you breathe deep, if you can do that one minute for every hour that you're at work, I can almost guarantee you 100% you will reduce your stress. You will get home and you will be less stressed. Maybe not every day. There could be something that, you know, really big and huge and tragic that happens at work or um, stressful uh, project related or something like that. But it'll help. It'll help a lot. And on a normal day, you'll get home far less stressed than if you don't do this. So what does that do? Well, stress is relieving your stress. And I've done it. I've done episodes on this one. You can look them up. Relieving your stress is going to help you be healthier, help you live longer. Um, and it's going to reduce chronic uh, illnesses. So breathing, breathing properly is the key. It's the first key. It's the first step. And it's why I tell all the athletes that I train runners, soccer players, basketball players, football players, baseball players, anybody. It's the first thing you have to learn how to do. If you're going to be a successful athlete is you have to learn how to breathe properly while you're exercising. And to learn how to breathe properly while you're exercising, you have to learn how to breathe, period. It's the same way 
when I tell people, if you want to learn how to run faster, you have to learn how to walk efficiently. If you don't walk efficiently, you're not going to run fast. There's no way. You're not going to do it. You will run faster if you walk efficiently. You will exercise better if you know how to breathe and you breathe efficiently. Because oxygen is the key. It's the number one thing that we have to have. So learn how to breathe. Start doing that a minute at a time. Do it right when you wake up. And I know you might think, oh man, if I do it right when I wake up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fall asleep. No, but you're setting a tone that I can do this. Yeah, you just did it for six hours, eight hours, however long you slept. But you're setting a tone saying, I can do this consciously and I'm not gonna go to the other way. And then when you exercise and breathing, breathe in through your nose. You're getting so much air in there so fast when you're, especially when you're, after you've been exercising for a little bit, your breathing's getting a little bit more labored, a little bit stronger. Breathe in through your nose. It's something that's been very difficult for me to transition to, but I'm doing it. I highly recommend it for everybody else because the research I'm saying is just, it, it's why I'm 46 and I've been an athlete all my life and now I'm changing because the research shows it's far better for you. Not just from a health standpoint, but also from an exercise standpoint. So in through your nose um, and take those moments every day to do that deep breathing. You will see vast improvements um, in your stress level and you'll start to see improvements in your health. And you might be shocked by that, but just getting the right amount of oxygen. And if you can even add the right amount of water throughout the day, those two things, you can see massive changes. You can see massive changes um, in your health and your stress level. So I uh, highly recommend that. So that's a little tip on breathing. And uh, you know, if you don't believe me, watch somebody. Watch somebody in your household when they breathe. Watch how they breathe when they sleep and watch how they breathe when they're awake and see the difference. And uh, you might go, oh, okay, I get it. I can see it. Now it's time to try it. So give it a try. And uh, let's all breathe better. And you know, one of the things that I've said, if we breathe better and we breathe through the nose and we let the nose take care of filtering things out instead of mouth breathing, mouth breathing, we don't have any control. Mouth stuff goes in. Why do you think you have to cover your mouth now when there's viruses around that are super uh contagious if we all breathe through our nose you'd be healthier even when there's massive viruses around so um breathe through your nose give it a shot give it a try take those minutes that minute every hour to learn how to breathe to teach yourself how to breathe and eventually you won't have to think about it it'll be just the way you breathe and then you're going to be on your way. Thanks for checking out the All in Health and Wellness Confidence Through Health podcast. Our goal is to use health as a conduit to help you reach your goals in life.